Hall uh, has done an amazing job. Uh, you, you notice that both our gas plays today are not domestics. Uh, Valora in Turkey and Canacol in Colombia. So uh, I wanted Jason to come down and talk to us today because uh, few teams have had the turnaround these guys have had. Uh, Charles and CEO Charles and Jason uh, have chased a couple different plays in Colombia and really on, on, on this gas play up in the northeast uh, part of the country have just tapped into an amazing reservoir and done a great job at getting infrastructure done as well. So you're hitting fantastic wells, you're getting uh, infrastructure done. Uh, I was down on the, uh, the property tour last fall uh, and got to see just how great the topography was. We got to see the, the long uh, trench that had, was being dug for a, a, a pipeline and it was getting, like, it was getting done. And so uh, these guys have had big step ups in production uh, the last two, three quarters, and we're going to see that again come uh, Q4, Q1 this year. And so to kind of give us a handle on how all that's moving and how the infrastructure is being built to meet them there is Jason Bedner from Canacol. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I know, as Keith mentioned, I'm well aware I'm the last person before lunch and everyone's hungry, but I think we can be relatively quick here. Uh, it's a simple story. Uh, our CEO is based in, in Bogota, as is the bulk of our team, so um, uh, I'll be doing the presentation today. All of our, uh, everything I'm going to talk about is in U.S. dollars, even though we're listed on the TSX, as many of our peers, our functional currency operating in a foreign country is U.S. dollars, so that's what you'll see here today. Um, I'll just point out on the, on the, uh, the map on the left-hand side, so that's the country of Colombia. Our assets on the two uh, yellow boxes essentially are gas assets along the northwest coast, the Caribbean coast. And you can notice that you've got um, the Andes Mountains on one side and, of course, the ocean on the other, right? So it is a truly uh, uh, basin-constrained <laughs> gas play, and hence the large gas prices that we fetch, uh, close to $5 US in MCF. Uh, just with respect to Colombia, a couple of reminders here. So it is a very old democracy. Uh, it has the second largest uh, uh, um, economy in LATAM. There's 50 million people there. In 2003, they had uh, large reforms of the oil and gas, which is essentially ranked uh, number the, the, the top three reforms recently. Um, and of course, there's been the recent uh, 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 FARC peace treaty process. Um, I will note that our gas assets in the basin we operate in is very benign. Uh, the pipelines we operate on have never had an attack in 31 years, but obviously uh, peace is good for the country and good for business. Okay, so we have uh, five ENP e gas contracts uh, totaling roughly 1.1 million net acres. Uh, that, those were the yellow blocks I showed earlier. Uh, very strong gas price, averaging approximately $4.75 US uh, per MCF. Our operating margins are also very strong, uh, approaching 70 or just over 70% operating margins. And our finding and development costs on our three-year average has been 50 cents in MCF. Uh, we have 505 BCF of 2P gas reserves, and we have another 2 TCF as per third-party engineering reports in uh, undiscovered resource category, which we're slowly drilling our way through. On the left-hand side, you can see our strong growth in gas uh, production recently, or even over the last 18 months or so, from, from 80 million cubic feet per day uh, to 200, what's expected to be 230 million cubic feet per day by the end of this year. In the last four years, we've discovered over 400 BCF of those reserves. Uh, obviously, this has driven the impressive growth in our reserve base you see on the left-hand side. Our 2P reserve value as of December 31st, 2017, a couple months ago, was 1.6 billion US. And our risk value of the 2TCF uh, uh, risk turns out to, of the unrisk 2TCF would turn out to be 789 million uh, uh, risk. 
just a little breakdown of our gas price. So in the last quarter, this was Q1, uh, we fetched $5.14 in MCF. Uh, we added small embedded transportation in that of 41 cents, which would total the 473, once again, the four, approximating the 475 that I refer to. Very low operating costs, which were 40 cents for that quarter. Royalties of 62 cents. Uh, driving the gas net back of $3.71 on the headline price of 4.73 net of transportation. So uh, once again, a 72% margin on that. Our finding a development cost for the, our three-year average, not to cherry pick the best year, but our three-year average was 50 cents in MCF. Um, obviously that drives very uh, strong full cycle metrics. Um, another a uh, very positive thing about our, our gas and the basin we operate in is, is we expect and have currently been anticipating, we've operated in these, some of these assets since 2011, a 10% uh, decline rate. So once we hit our full 230 million cubic feet a day stride, which we're just waiting for that pipeline to be completed, uh, we anticipate that we would uh, spend roughly a third of our free cash flow a uh, third of our cash flow uh, just for maintenance capital, which obviously gives us a, a, a healthy amount of free cash flow to chase uh, future growth or other opportunities, et cetera. With so respect to our guidance, our capital CapEx guidance for 2018 was $80 million. Our gas as a recent pipeline came on, I'll get uh, a bit into that detail later, um, has gone from 85 million in, in Q4 up to 2018 guidance of 114 to 129 uh, million cubic feet a day. We do have oil assets that we're looking to spin out. They total roughly 1,700 barrels a day currently. It's obviously non-core to us now when we expect to be producing close to 40,000 uh, 40, BOE of gas a day. And of course our key objectives are to achieve the 230 million exit rate. Uh, target 100% reserve replacement this year, the best of those assets, and become essentially a pure play uh, a Colombian EMP story. So a little detail on uh, the breakdown of the announced 80 million CapEx program. It's 97% gas related. It's a seven well drill program. Uh, we're lucky to drill a very modest amount of, of gas since they're, uh, of gas wells since they have such prolific rates. Uh, four exploration wells, three development wells. We just announced the Breva discovery uh, uh, less than a week ago, and uh, very soon we'll be on our next well, which is called uh, Barojo. <clears throat> Probably some more details of those later on. This slide is really the, uh, I guess, the, the heart of the story, if you will. Uh, once again, this is the Caribbean coast of Colombia. You can see our gas position once again in yellow. Uh, our pipeline network in black, which is typically owned by a company called Promigas, as, as labeled there. Our key clients lie essentially 180 kilometers north in the uh, Cartagena and Barranquilla area. These are typically large thermoelectric producers, which uh, use our gas to create electricity, obviously. Um, notably in the upper right-hand corner of the map, um, you'll see the onshore, offshore um, Guajira gas field. So, uh, you know, this sets the tone as to how we're able to, you know, sell our gas for $5. So those were 1970s discoveries. They were multi-TC, multi-multi-TCF discoveries. They produced at rates up to 750 million cubic feet a day into a basin that really only required 600 million cubic feet a day. They had so much gas, they just shipped, uh, I think, 150 million cubic feet of Venezuela for quite some time. Um, those are now in terminal decline. As recently as 2013, I believe, they still produce 650 million cubic feet a day. This year's total, I think, is 333. Next year's is 270, and they're slowly and surely on their way to zero at about 15 to 20% a year. Um, hence the opportunity. So you can see on the right-hand slide, now this is the country gas supply on the right-hand side. It's even more pronounced on our Caribbean region, but these are government statistics. So on the right-hand side, you see the country, and you see as Guajira slowly falls off its cliff that in the, in the blue, um, the country's gas supply obviously decreases precipitously. In the yellow, you see our attempt to help mitigate that, um, but really, it, the, the government's forecasting a um, excess demand over total Colombian supply. Um, we're the only active driller in Colombia for natural gas. 
Um, and with the two TCF we have on our land, we're hopeful that we can um, help that, that current situation as you see here. Um, here's a bit of a timeline as how we're planning to deliver the 100, uh, on schedule to deliver an excess, uh, an extra 100 million cubic feet a day by December 2018. I'll just take you back to as late as um, late 2015, where we only had 20 million cubic feet of pipeline capacity. Uh, that 20 million cubic feet essentially just went south to Saramatosa. You see there, south of our yellow blocks. Um, we were limited by that as we continue to grow. Um, we obviously realized that we needed to get some gas north um, to the coast, uh, to Cartagena and Barranquilla. So in April of 2016, we added 70 million cubic feet a day. Uh, that was a PROMI gas funded pipeline up to once again Cartagena. Uh, they paid for it. We signed a shipper pay. Our, our customers signed a taker pay and that's how we closed the loop on, on the risk on that. Um, so obviously at that point in time, the 20 we had before and the 70 million heading north totaled to 90 million, which we did throughout um, 2016 and 2017. In December of 2017, as labeled number two, uh, we built the Sabanis flow line. That's the one that Keith referred to uh, coming on our field trip and seeing. So that uh, added 40 million cubic feet a day and got it up to the Cincelejo Bremen drop off point where there'd been a bottleneck south of that. So as of today, our capacity is roughly 130 million cubic feet a day. On any given day, we, we push those limits. And the meanwhile, as we, um, as we continue to find gas and the thermoelectric producers and other, other producers uh, or other users um, have a need for more gas. We've engaged Promi Gas as labeled number three to essentially twin that pipeline heading north once again, right? So in a series of new pipe and some compression, uh, they will be adding another, they're currently adding another 100 million cubic feet a day on certain parts of this. Certain permits are still awaiting uh, release from the government such that by near the end of 2018, we expect that to be complete, at which point in time we'll have uh, 230 million cubic feet a day of, of, uh, of pipeline capacity. Bulk of those contracts we've signed for, for uh, you know, the better part of the decade heading forward here. Um, the map on the left-hand side shows a half our acreage. Uh, that is the, the, the southern blocks um, the north block being SSJN7, we recently just acquired off Frontera. So this is really the block we've had for uh, uh, three or four plus years. Um, hence our detailed geological work on this. On the red are our discoveries. Uh, you'll see 12 discoveries. That's 12 out of 14 exploration wells, which would be a 86% uh, success rate. The, the, the yellow and the paler are prospects and leads, which total the two TCF on 44 such prospects and leads. On the dotted blue line around that would be our uh, large 3D seismic program, uh, which there'll be a couple slides on later. It's very important as to our track record of success. And on the bottom right hand corner is a list of uh, 2018 drills in this schedule. So you see the ones where we've, uh, with check marks where we've uh, drilled You'll see the upcoming ones uh, uh, labeled with the canical symbol there. Um, there is actually an error on this slide. We recently drilled a, d uh, a well at Chirami and that happens to be missing on here. So that would total the seven wells I referred to earlier. Um, historically, we'd only produced, uh, only produced gas from a deep CDO section, which is roughly nine or 10,000 feet. Um, uh, in in uh, late 2016, uh, we essentially decided to have a look at what we would call here North America bypass pay um, to mitigate our risk and have a second play type. So in November of, of uh, uh, 2016, we built, drilled the Nelson 6 well. And lo and behold, what we saw on you know, the, the logs and, and uh, while drilling, that bypass pay was confirmed. And we had a test rate of 23 million cubic feet a day yeah. on that. We followed that up in that shower Procaro zone in uh, June of 2017 with the Toronto well, which produced 24 million cubic feet a day. And last week, uh, we announced the Breva discovery, which is uh, still awaiting testing, but has very healthy pay and porosity, as you can see all our wells do here. Okay, the reason for uh, our um, uh, 
a very impressive success rate. Here on the left-hand side, you can see our uncalibrated 3D. On the right-hand side, you can see that same 3D uh, image reprocessed for AVO, which of course is used extensively in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, we've, we've, we've developed a program to use it on, on our gas. Um, for those of you not familiar with AVO, um, it, uh, once it's reprocessed, you can see the uh, presence of uh, a gas versus fluid in the sandstone. Uh, and the gas here you'll see glows red. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's liquid, so you can tell if it's gas or liquid, the gas glows red. If it's liquid, you can't tell if it's uh, oil or water. So it does oil exp explorers no good, but it does uh, us a lot of good. Um, and we've had a 100% success rate when drilling into uh, AVO-based seismic on this. So um, once again, that's, that's the driver for our growth. Um, our next exploration well, as I mentioned, is, is Barojo. That'll be spud certainly in a, in a week or thereabouts. It's once again a deeper CDO well. Uh, it's a follow, uh, there are pending success. There will be follow-up wells uh, to the northwest, as you see on this map. There's a large fairway. Uh, and on the right-hand side, you can see the, the cross section, and once again, um, glowing red. And you, if you follow the Barojo uh, uh, well trajectory down, you'll see the red target there where we expect to uh, drill into. Um, after the Barojo well, uh, the drilling rig goes back to a Kaniwade CDO discovery, um, which we had in 2017. Uh, we will drill two wells directly from that pad, hence saving some time and energy. Uh, Kaniwade East will be uh, first, and then we'll see the follow-up well, uh, Kaniwade West. On the right-hand side, you'll see once again follow the well trajectory, and you'll see the multiple red glows, which we'll be uh, targeting in the drilling of that particular well. Um, briefly, we do have some Colombian oil assets, as I mentioned. Uh, we had other oil assets, one being Ecuador. Ecuador was down to roughly 1,200 barrels a day. Um, we've had that since 2011 or 2012, uh, prior to us having great success in gas. It served its purpose at the time, but now obviously no longer core. Uh, we sold that in February 18 and uh, for uh, uh, proceeds of $36 million, 30 of which is in the bank. The last uh, six million is contractually due in mid-2019. That leaves us with our Colombian gas, obviously, and Colombian oil. Uh, the Colombian oil blocks, uh, 12 oil blocks, 1.1 million acres, production of roughly 1,900 barrels a day. Uh, we've announced a plan to spin out the bulk of that. Um, once again, obviously non-core to us since it would re represent uh, less than 5% of our total DOE portfolio once the new pipeline is completed by Promigas. I should mention that second Promigas pipeline, obviously they're paying for that. It doesn't cost us a dime. Uh, and once again, we sign shipper pay and taker pay contracts on the other side, um, which will indeed leave us with shale oil. We are choosing to keep the shale oil. Um, it's a very, uh, um, uh, the position has a lot of upside for us. We're partnered with Ponico. There's two blocks, uh, and it's uh, La Luna world-class shale, 2,000 thick uh, shale that's a source rock from uh, Trinidad and Tobago into Venezuela and all the way down to Ecuador. So. Um, the rock characteristics are very good. There's been a lot of science on that well. And sometime uh, in, in 2019, we're hopeful that we can uh, get a proper well down and frack with Conoco as the operator on that. Uh, moving to the balance sheet. Very recently, we announced that we had uh, closed 320 million US of uh, senior unsecured notes, i.e. a bond. Prior to that, we had 305 million of a term loan. That term loan was uh, scheduled to begin terming out in March of 2019. Uh, the purpose behind uh, switching out the term loan for the bond was uh, a multifold, obviously. Um, uh, our term loan had a floating rate, which uh, in these very volatile uh, interest rates was pushing 8%. We've switched that out for a fixed price 7.25% bond. Uh, we've deferred those payments, obviously, that were beginning in March of 2019, out for seven years to where they're due in 2025. Uh, not only that, it freed up $25 million from a debt service reserve account and allows us to focus on our, our future growth. 
speaking of which, on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the three consecutive uh, quarters of growth. Uh, the third bar on the left there would be Q1 of 2018, uh, as the Savannah's pipeline started to come along the, online the last 40. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see how we'll go, our, our pipeline capacity will go from 130 million up to 230 million here in, inside the next 12 months. So um, anxiously awaiting that. The right-hand side, you'll see our capital structure, uh, roughly $4.22 uh, a share current trading range. The market cap of 585 is now denominated in U.S. dollars. Our net debt of $259 million, uh, meaning we had roughly, I think it was $90 million of working capital at uh, March 31st, and a total enterprise value, therefore, of uh, roughly $844 million U.S., strong uh, inside ownership of 22%. Um, that is it for now, Pete. Yes, 100% owned and operated, correct. Yeah, I think, you know, it's um, obviously management feels as frustrated as a current shareholder perhaps might feel on that. I can tell you that when we were going from 20 million cubic feet a day to 90 million cubic feet a day in 2015, um, that it took, it took the Q1 of 2016 to be not only the announcement that the 90 million was operational, but the Q1 to be uh, reported and audited uh, and released, and after that was after that happened, then we saw the share price rise. So, you know, perhaps this will be a mirror image of that. Um, but at some stage, obviously, uh, we expect that that the share price and market cap will follow the value we've created. Yeah, yeah, great question. So. You know, if we assume that the gas price is a similar price, which it, you know, it's our expectation, right, as we fill in that portfolio, we do leave a small, uh, we aim for roughly 10% of that portfolio to be sold in the spot market. Sometimes the spot market is as low as $3. Sometimes in recent years, we've seen it be $11, right? So we're willing to pay those, those, uh, those swings, if you will, um, hence not contract all our gas. If you assume it's 475 and take it down to that same slide that I showed you where you have a net back of approximately 375, if you crunch through that math, you'll see $300 million of, uh, of uh, uh, field profit, knock off your G&A interest in taxes, you'll get somewhere in the range of $200 million of after-tax cash flow, right? So, um, you know, we're not putting out guidance on that yet because um, it still needs to be accomplished and we've given guidance for current year only, but at that point, it's our expectation that we'd be in the range of needing 60 or 70 million of maintenance capital, which would leave a large, free, um, unallocated base of cash. So obviously with um, the term debt payments or the bond payments not due for seven years, you might ask what you might do with that. As we hear it continues to decline, we could chase the next leg of future growth. Um, we're gonna need to shoot some seismic at some stage, which we haven't done in a while. Um, but yeah, we do have a large, outside of that 3D that you saw earlier, we have a 2D seismic database which shows more prospects and leads. Some of those are very large. Some of those fields that were on that map earlier, Nelson was 200 BCF, Clarinetti was 140 BCF. So we're gonna shoot some 3D seismic off the edge of our existing 3D seismic. And as we continue to see Guajira decline, um, it's very conceivable that we could chase another pipeline and, and expand our production north of 230 million to those same set of thermoelectric producers who will be looking for gas at some stage. Yeah, so we're not in the business of, of operating pipelines generally. We're more than happy to let Promigas, who controls that part of the region, do that for us. We, do, we did lay, as you saw, the Sabanis flow line. That was our initiative. 
Uh, essentially, it just de we call it a flow line, not even a pipeline. It's a very simple six inch flex steel pipeline that we rolled into the ground. That was 80 kilometers. It essentially just de-bottled neck part of the uh, Promi gas system where we could get it to a more open pipeline space. Uh, we laid that pipe in somewhere in the range of three to four months. It was very simple and easy for us. It's the same pipe we use to, t use to tie in all our, our pipe to our, our uh, Hobo gas plant. Um, so we do own that one jointly with a group of investors. That pipe was roughly $40 million. Uh, and we own 10%, so we own 25, or, sorry, we own $10 million of that, which is roughly, of course, 25%. We do own all our facilities 100%, though. So. Uh, currently, uh, we have facilities that are capable of producing 230 million cubic feet a day, and we're currently expanding that just to have some redundancy. Uh, we announced that in our last quarterly report here uh, a couple weeks ago, and that will take our plant capacity up to 330 million cubic feet a day, which would dovetail into my last comment about potential expansion at some stage beyond that 230 million cubic feet a day. No, we currently have 230 million cubic feet a day of plant capacity, and of course our pipeline capacity is only 130. Yeah, well once we, so, yeah, sorry for confusing you there. Once we um, have the new pipeline on stream, if we left our current plant capacity at 230, and the pipeline capacity at 230, we would be at the limit, right? So we would like some redundancy. So we're uh, uh, expanding that gas plant from 230 to 330. And as we announced, that'll be roughly a $26 million plant expansion that we're beginning here on shortly. Once you guess, just out of a, not necessarily needed, but out of abundance of caution, uh, and at the same time planning for potential future growth. Yeah, so I mean, prior to issuing the bond, of course, we would have needed to spend close to $100 million a year on debt repayment beginning in 2019. So at that point in time, um, simple math would tell you a dividend would be um, is it possible, but perhaps not likely. So at this point in time, having freed up that $100 million and having the luxury of a 10% decline rate, it is certainly something that is conceivable. Um, the board has not made a decision yet on that, um, but it is certainly in the discussion, right? Now that you have free cash flow and you have your debt um, uh, in a bullet payment in 2025, you have to find something to do with it. Uh, uh, we could keep drilling, as I mentioned, and chase future growth. We could contemplate a dividend. I don't think you'll see us doing acquisitions because uh, at 50 cents in MCF F&D costs, I think it's going to be very difficult to find acquisitions that can compete with that. Um, but you know, those are the those are the three things that are left to to my mind. All right. Thanks, everyone.